Hello and welcome. Growing carnivorous plants at home is easier than you may think. It may sound intimidating to grow a flesh-eating plant at home, but really anyone can do it. In this short video, I will show you how simple it is to create a home for a carnivorous plant in a glass vase. The main principle is the same for a large group of different carnivorous plants like sundews, venus traps, cobra plants, or the pitcher plant, which one I'm going to use as an example today. That includes plants that live in rainforests, bogs, swamps, grasslands, lakes, streams, and so on. Of course, there is no one common way to grow all carnivorous plants, and there is no only one way to grow any particular carnivorous plant. Here I have a sundew plant, but it is almost going dormant because the winter is getting colder and colder, and it's getting colder on my windowsill, the days are getting shorter. My Drosera have only a few leaves left before it will fall asleep completely and these seed stalks. Seeds will need stratification period. But I also have some other bog plants propagating by runners, so I will wait a bit before I place that vase in a colder room. The pitchers are still full of life and I will keep them up for another month before the winter rest. Besides, some of them grew too dense and now is a good time to divide them Pitcher or Saracenia plant easily propagate and are easy to repot. They grow from a swollen stem called a rhizome, which grows at soil level. Usually when you repot your plant, you can also divide your plant as the rhizome naturally divides in most species. I can just simply cut some very dense parts without destroying the delicate balance and pulling everything out of the vase, kind of like this. So how do you create a cozy home for your pitcher plant? We know that pitcher plants have very weak root systems and they grow in very poor nutrient conditions. And that is why, as an addition to their diet, carnivorous plants need to consume insects and small vertebrates. I need to stimulate a pitcher environment close to its natural habitat. Carnivorous plants love humidity. Outside is a different story, but inside your house with heating and air conditioning, humidity can be very low. And for that reason, I need to create a humid place, but I do not need to buy any expensive terrariums or special containers. I can use a simple glass vase. You need to choose a suitable glass container. The bigger the plant, the bigger the vase you will need. I also need some gravel, stones, or sand, or rocks to place at the bottom and they will hold the water, creating a lake effect. I only use rainwater or osmosis water. I fill the water so that it's just slightly above the stones. I place the root part of the carnivorous plant just above the stones and cover it with fresh, alive sphagnum moss. I have my own moss I'm growing here at home, and we do have a video on our channel on how to grow your own moss at home if you would like to check that out. Sphagnum moss grows naturally together with the pitcher plant, sometimes just swimming together in naturally formed islands just on the surface of the water, lakes, or any bogs. Moss will provide shelter, humidity, and high acidity, and pitcher plants love this. Both the pitcher and the moss can survive in very poor nutrient conditions. They maybe have some sort of symbiotic relationship, and both grow very fast as you can see here. Moss will pick up water from the stones through rhizoids or capillary systems and just needs slight contact with water. Sometimes for a better and more interesting display and if you want to make your terrarium more, look more like a terrarium, I'm going to add a few stems of lake grass or club moss or cloudberry leaves or cranberry. These plants also grow very nice and humid in wet condition and will also add a little bit of benefit to your small closed biosystem. So before the biosystem settles in and begins working on its own without causing any trouble in the very beginning, I'm going to use some potassium permanganate to reduce some pathogenic bacteria and prevent any rotting or bad smell. Only, only in the beginning, normally just once, Rarely twice, I will dissolve a few crystals and add them to the water. It is amazing how fast those small artificial bile systems come into perfect balance and good beneficial microorganisms outweigh the bad ones and everything begins to work together like in nature. No bad smell, no rotting, and besides, sphagnum moss have antibacterial and antifungal properties, so no bad bacteria or fungus can grow when everything is established. 
In this way, to create a terrarium for carnivorous plants, you do not need to spray it with water every day. And that is a good factor for our busy lifestyles. Depending on the temperature, I will have to add once in every two weeks a glass of clean water. Just watch the water level and don't let it get too low. I place everything on a Sunday windowsill. Carnivorous plants love lots of sunshine. Good amount of natural or artificial ultraviolet radiation is needed to grow these amazing plants. That beautiful vase terrarium to can decorate your room or your desk and is really easy to create. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave any comments or questions you have below and don't forget to subscribe.